What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Bonsai U. This time around we're gonna be talking about midsummer techniques and maintenance for alternating leaf pattern broadleaf and deciduous species. All right, in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at specifically alternating leaf pattern, broadleaf and deciduous species, and what we need to be doing with those in midsummer in terms of their maintenance and care. Now, specifically, we're gonna be looking at this tree right beside me here, which is a pseudocedonia or Chinese quince. But the techniques we're gonna be talking about in this episode could apply to a number of different species, including hornbeam, stewardia, flowering apricot, and many others. Now, earlier this year in May, we actually did a video on a flowering apricot, a prunus mume bonsai, where we did partial outer canopy defoliation on that tree. This tree right here, the pseudocedonia, is another species that you can apply partial outer canopy defoliation to. The growth that you see on the plant right now is in fact the second flush of growth after it was defoliated in May. So we're in early July right now. That's what, about two and a half months or so from defoliation to this second flush of growth coming out, elongating and hardening off. Now you'll notice on this tree that a lot of the shoots on the plant are somewhere between four to eight leaves long. And the color of the leaves have sort of changed from that sort of velvety, bright fluorescent green to more of a shiny kind of dark hunter green. This is a sign that that second flush of growth has completely hardened off on the plant and we can start performing the techniques that we're going to be talking about in this episode. Okay, so the first technique we're going to be applying to this tree is just a simple cutback of all the elongated shoots. I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer here and we're going to talk about the nuances and details of how we decide where and how far to cut back. All right, let's take a look at this shoot right here. You'll notice that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves on this particular shoot. So this is perfect timing to do a simple cutback across the entire tree. Now, you've probably read in various locations on the internet or in different books about cutting back on average to two leaves across the entire tree. Well, technically this is true, but what we wanna do is be a little bit more careful than just willy-nilly cutting back to two leaves on each shoot. There are a couple things we need to keep in mind. So number one is going to be that the first leaf back here on the interior it's almost always a misshapen leaf, a little bit smaller than the leaves further out on the shoot, and it doesn't have a bud at the very base down here. This is what's called a susoba in Japanese, which basically translates to a budless leaf. So what that means is at the very base of this leaf, right where it attaches to the shoot, there is no latent bud here. So just as an example, if we were to cut all the way back to that first leaf, because there's no latent bud there, it's likely not to form a new shoot here, and we may actually end up killing off this branch. So what we wanna do is ignore that first leaf and start our leaf count from the second leaf out. So this is going to be leaf number one, then leaf number two, and we would cut back to here, like so. Again, you wanna ignore that first leaf right there. Now, one thing you can also do is if the canopy is very, very full on the tree and a lot of light is not really penetrating to the interior, you can actually go ahead and remove that susoba. It's not really serving any purpose. It's not going to be detrimental to that particular branch on the tree. And again, it allows a little bit more light to penetrate to the interior. Another thing you should be considering is the directionality of the secondary shoot. So in other words, what that means is whatever leaf that we're cutting back to, whatever direction that leaf is pointing, when we cut back, you're going to activate the bud at the base of that leaf to elongate and grow. And it's gonna grow in the same direction that that leaf is pointing. So on this particular branch right here, you'll notice that this is our susoba back here. This would be our second leaf, or really our first leaf in the count, and then the second leaf in the count a little bit further out. Well, the problem is if we were to cut this back to here, that next shoot is then going to emerge from the top and shoot straight up, which is not ideal. We're trying to create a downward sort of lateral undulating branch pattern on the tree, and this would destroy that. So in the case of this branch, we are actually going to cut back to just one leaf here, again, ignoring the susoba, because this leaf is in the right direction and that secondary shoot that will start emerging over the next few weeks will emerge in the proper direction. This is essentially a clip and grow or directional pruning on alternating leaf pattern deciduous and broadleaf species. 
Here is another example where directional pruning is very important. So for example, you see the shoot coming out here. We've got this leaf sort of protruding back towards the interior, this leaf here coming out towards the exterior. You never want to cut back to a leaf that's going to then produce a shoot that goes back in towards the interior of the plant. We always want to cut to a shoot that's going to protrude towards the exterior of the plant. It always looks messy and jumbled to have a lot of branches going back towards the interior. So again, always look for cutting back to leaves like this that are sticking out towards the exterior so that that next shoot that starts emerging here also emerges towards the exterior of the plant. So there's one more thing I wanna mention with regards to cutting back elongating shoots like this, and that is internode length. If you have very long internodes on a plant like this, meaning that the space between each leaf is very long on the shoot, you may want to consider cutting back to just the first leaf. Again, ignore the susa bud, take that out of your leaf count, cut back to that first leaf with a dormant bud at the base. That will help keep the tree pushed back to some degree, again, in instances where you have long internodes. Now you have to keep in mind again that when you cut back to that first leaf, the next shoot may actually be protruding in the wrong direction. In that case, you're gonna to have to correct for that with wire and actually bend the shoot in the proper direction. So you can't use a true clip and grow technique. You will actually have to apply some wire to the plant. Not really that big a deal as long as you keep an eye on that wire so that it doesn't bite in over time. But again, just keep that in mind. We're looking for directional pruning. We're looking for long internodes. Do we need to push back to that first leaf to help aid in pushing the growth back because of the long internodes? And will we have to wire the plant afterwards? All of those things need to be kept in mind. And again, there's so many variables involved in bonsai that it's hard to cover each of those aspects in a short video like this, but I hope that makes sense and clears it up a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the second technique for this video, and that is how are we gonna get more light and air to penetrate to the interior of this tree? You'll notice as the tree is right now, it's got quite a full canopy on it. And even after we cut back all of those extending shoots on the exterior here, the canopy is still gonna be quite full. So all of the interior growth, all of these back buds that are closer to the trunk, further back in on each of our lateral branches there, are gonna be shaded out over the course of the rest of the growing season. As they're shaded out, they become weaker and potentially die off. So we need to get as much light to penetrate to the interior of the tree as possible. Well, early in the growing season with a species like this, because we can partially defoliate it, that helps get that light to the interior and strengthen those inner buds. But again, now that we've got this full canopy on the tree, it doesn't really matter. All that work that we did before, we could lose because light's not getting to the interior of the plant. So what I wanna do with the remaining growth on the exterior of the plant here is actually something called leaf cutting. We're gonna take the remaining leaves on the exterior here, fold them in half, cut them in half, and that will allow light to penetrate to the interior of the plant. So I'm bring the camera in a little bit closer again so you can see what this process looks like. All right, so let's take a look at this leaf right here. Again, this is on the outside canopy of the tree. So we wanna be cutting something like this in half to allow that light to the interior. So what we're gonna do here is take the leaf, lightly fold it along its central axis of symmetry here, and then we're gonna cut this on a backwards angle, like so. That way when we open this up, it still has the same general shape. Obviously it's a little bit of a harsh angle here, but it looks much better than taking this and cutting it either flat or cutting it the opposite angle, which is gonna look even stranger. So this allows you to reduce the photosynthetic surface of this leaf to allow more light to penetrate to the interior. And if we do this on the entire plant, you're getting essentially about 50% more light to the interior of the tree. The second benefit in cutting a leaf in half like this is that, again, we're reducing that photosynthetic surface, which means this leaf is producing less food for the branch behind it, which means that this branch is going to thicken at a slower rate. The goal with these species is to show them in winter, show off the nice, fine, soft branch ramification. So cutting leaves in half like this will help keep those branches soft and thin so they look nice and delicate in the winter view. Okay, so this is what the tree should look like after shoot pruning and leaf cutting on the external canopy. Now again, keep in mind, we did not touch any of the leaves on the interior of the plant. We wanna leave that full photosynthetic surface there so that as light is now penetrating to those areas, those areas are then being fed properly via photosynthesis and strengthening over the rest of the growing season. 
Now, you may be asking, why are we so worried about keeping that internal growth alive? Well, again, as these trees elongate and grow, we need something on the interior to cut back to, to keep the general size of the tree in perpetuity. So keeping those internal branches, leaves, and shoots alive is very, very important, regardless of whether or not it's a broadleaf, evergreen, deciduous, or a coniferous piece of material. So you definitely wanna keep that in mind. There are gonna be different techniques depending on the species as to how to keep that interior growth alive. The other thing you might be asking yourself is, why didn't we just perform a second partial outer canopy defoliation on this tree instead of cutting the leaves in half? Well, again, when you partially defoliate a tree like this, it actually weakens the tree to some degree. So if you're doing multiple defoliations over the course of a growing season, it's going to continually weaken the plant and possibly cause it to die or cause dieback of certain areas of the tree. So we don't want to do that on a plant like this. There are some exceptions to that. For example, trident maple, you can defoliate multiple times in a growing season, but that would be the only species I would recommend that you do that to. Aside from that species, this type of technique is what you wanna be applying to these types of trees. Now, for those species that can't be defoliated at all, even earlier in the season, this type of technique, again, you can perform it in May once the new flush of growth has come out and completely hardened off. The same technique can be applied to those species and you'll get similar results, keeping that interior growth alive, pushing back the inner nodes, and keeping the general shape of the tree. Hope that answers some of your all's questions and misunderstandings about broadleaf material, particularly summer maintenance for these species. If you like what we do here, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you wanna support us monetarily, you can click on that link in the description down below. It'll take you to my website. And you can donate to help Bonsai U going forward. Thank you again so much for checking out this episode and until next time, take care.